Welcome back to Altera. We've quietly analyzed, researched, developed, and tested our way towards something special, our own proprietary carbon barrel. By partnering with aerospace composite engineers and drawing on our experience in precision manufacturing, the Altera carbon barrel is finally here. Follow along as our founder Drew pulls back the curtain on why we built it, what makes it different, and how it's manufactured right here in our Boise headquarters. Hey everyone, this is an Altera carbon barrel. Over here is a big name brand barrel that is going in the garbage. They don't warranty anything for us and uh, it doesn't meet our accuracy standards. So we've already built this gun, brought it to the range, broke it in, tested it, tested it again, rechecked everything. And this barrel will not shoot to our standards. Guaranteed, when we chamber up one of these, it's going to shoot significantly better. And that is the whole reason that we decided to make our own barrels. We have too high of a scrap rate and basically every barrel that we've tested or every carbon fiber barrel that we've tested has significant performance issues and our scrap rate's too high. So this one's going in the garbage. The main reasons people buy carbon fiber barrels are because they're lightweight or slightly lighter than our steel barrels and because they look cool. Those are the pretty much the only reasons that you would do this. So there's a couple of ways, several ways that carbon fiber barrels are made. Some companies have just a veneer of carbon fiber over the steel and basically a heavy steel blank and a veneer of carbon over that. So it looks really cool and those ones often shoot fairly well, but it, it doesn't have the, any kind of weight savings that you would get in what you would think in a carbon fiber barrel. So it doesn't do you any good. The other methods are some companies will profile the steel down underneath and then glue a tube over the outside of a steel barrel, glue a carbon fiber tube over. And so it looks like a carbon fiber barrel, but in reality, you just have a skinny profile steel with a glued on tube. Other companies have a tube that then it has a nut on the end that pretensions the carbon fiber barrel and the steel. Those methods are, are kind of, uh, kind, kind of hokey really. And don't like we've tested all of them. You have to have the carbon chemically bonded to the steel in order to get the precision we need out of our rifles. So we're going to go over this process and how we do this. We film it, wind these barrels, and then we have a secret sauce on the inside that keeps them chemically bonded to the steel. So stick with us and enjoy the rest of this video. We're gonna conduct a test here to show you the difference in bond strength between a competitor's carbon barrel and the new Altera carbon barrel. I'm gonna profile the carbon off down to the base layer of carbon where it meets the steel liner inside. And then we're gonna whack on these with a hammer and see how good the bond is between that innermost layer of carbon and the steel liner. So here we have the new Altera carbon barrel and here we have another name brand popular barrel. We've turned the carbon down so it's really close to the diameter of the steel on both of these barrels. And we're gonna see how good the bond is between this carbon and the inner steel liner. What the heck? Just to make sure we're not cheating. So I've already seen, you can kind of see that steel layer underneath. We have the Altera carbon barrel. I'm gonna have to do something a little bit different to test this. What I'm 
trying to do here is get a pick and see if there's a gap between the steel liner and the carbon or if it's stain adhered. Compared to that other one where I was able to get the pick in and kind of pry the carbon off, this one's going to require a little more force. Some more. Down on some more. So you can see it was able to cut through the carbon with that chisel. But we're trying to see is the bond between the carbon here and that inner layer liner of steel, is that stain adhered? Yeah, let's try and hit on some more. So, in other words, the bond that we get between the carbon and the steel of these is stronger than any force that your rifle's gonna exert during normal shooting. This is part of the reason that these barrels shoot so well for us and we're really excited to show you guys the rest of the process and how we do this. And behind me I have a, a lathe where we're actually profiling these part line single point cut rifle barrels. And this is the way it starts off and we take about four pounds of material off to get to our carbon barrel profile before we wrap it and we're going to go over the whole, that whole process. We've been working on this project for for years now trying to develop a process that gave us the the most precise rifle barrels out there. Here's a before and after of that carbon blank after we profiled it and you notice that it's significantly thinner and lighter and then this allows us to wrap carbon fiber over the outside. Most of us are probably familiar if you have a big heavy barrel, big heavy gun, they often shoot better or tighter dispersion. So part of that has to do with wall thickness and when you turn the carb, when you turn the steel down this thin, if your wall thickness due to the curve of the actual bore changes and then you turn it down here you could have a thicker you could have this side of the the barrel thicker or thinner than this side and it'll actually create a moment and bend in that area so now your muzzle is essentially pointed in a different direction which will show up as dispersion so wall thickness uniformity and wall thickness is a huge deal and that's why we take smaller cuts here not to induce any stress everything's indicated in within an a ten thousandths of an inch tail stock to head stock. Um, the other thing we've invested in is an ultrasonic tester and we're able to stay within a thousandths of an inch uniformity of wall thickness and we can actually see that before we go do any other work to these barrels and we can reject them before we put any more labor or effort into them. We wanted to go over kind of why we use these barrel blanks and the advantages of this. So we've used some button rifle barrels where it's basically cold forging the rifling into the barrel and it induces a lot of stress and a lot of these companies then will you know cryogenically stress relieve it sometimes they put it in an oven to stress relieve them and the whole concept is you need that bore to be as uniform and straight as possible and we never had good results with the button pulled barrels we still had a higher scrap rate because that stress and we can actually measure it it's, it's very hard to get that stress out of there. But when you start off with a triple stress relief barrel and then go through a machining process that doesn't induce any stress, we actually have more consistent tolerances. And by the time you've turned all this material off, going from this to this, you, you can't have any stress. This barrel is going to warp at these diameters. So that's why we use single point cut rifle barrels. They're a lot more expensive and it allows us to have the most uniform bore and groove diameter as well as straightness 
of any of the carbon barrels out there. This is a profile that makes a lot of sense to us where the majority of your chamber pressure is your chamber again is right here and that pressure bleeds off exponentially but there's still a lot of it right up here so we wanted to make sure that we had more meat here and we're able to make it a, a smaller profile out here towards the muzzle because by the time you got down to this end the pressure is significantly lower like orders of magnitude lower and this end up being the the best profile and meets our accuracy standard so we decided to stick with this profile so we're going to let this machine finish profiling this barrel and then we're going to show you how we filament wind the carbon on the barrels hey, this over here is our filament winding machine where we're wrapping carbon fiber onto our profiled bart line blanks and we're going to show you some of that also we've already done one layer of really tight wines called hoop wines and we're doing another layer of basically axial or more axial wines and the purpose of these is to prevent or reduce bending force and we have several we we had a prior video where we talked about the different winding strategy and why you do some of this uh, most of the companies just do a hoop wind or hand lay up some uh, some unidirectional like perfect axial length carbon we have three different patterns here to one resist bulge force which you get from all the pressure when that round goes off inside the chamber and two we have these long almost fully axial winds for basically resisting bending flex if you're to put a suppressor on the end you guys probably saw that video and then we have a couple other winds here we do we'll actually wrap this one down and make this tight with some more hoop winds and then we go to a 45 which ends up being basically perfect for resisting rotational force that you get when the bullet goes from zero to 250,000 rpm there's a lot of force trying to rotate and twist that barrel right here is the actual winder over there is a tensioner and then in between is a roller and the roller is applying what we call a wet layup or liquid resin and it actually is adjustable to put on the amount of resin that you want we actually run them kind of rich and then rely on lots of tension to in compaction to squeeze the excess resin out of the way so with these uh longer axial length winds there's a lot of gap and like i said earlier we need to have compaction you want the carbon and resin and secret sauce to all be in very as tight as possible to that steel blank so what we're able to do here is with that tensioner we turned up the tension and now we're going to run these hoop winds that now will compact those long radial winds which you can't do under as much tension we don't mind sharing a lot of this because we want our we want our customers to know what we're all about what we have going on and to understand that what they're getting in a product you know this is not a this is not a rebranded receiver in someone else's stock and you know one of three different carbon barrel companies barrels like the reason we're going down this route is because none of those companies can produce something that's any good anymore and or they don't have the results that we need so again if anybody wants to go ahead and try and take on this task uh, go for it because this is a huge investment in time and money and the only reason we do it is so we can ensure that our customers are getting the top quality products and best performing rifles so right now we've finished the carbon winding process and we put a what's called shrink tape over the outside of it and the shrink tape basically compacts with or shrinks with heat so it, along with the high tension that we run on the the carbon fiber toes the shrink wrap or the shrink tape will actually compact it even more in the oven and then shortly here once he cuts the ends off We'll show you the fixture that we built to cure these barrels in the oven and then kind of go over some of that process. 
So now we're gonna look at the oven. We've already shown you the barrel profiling process. We've showed you the carbon wrapping process. And we use really expensive, really high temp resin, high tech stuff as far as the resin goes, along with our secret sauce. And this is our oven. It's actually a powder coat oven, but we have a programmer on there that basically has a certain ramp cycle to heat up and then cool down. And it actually takes 12 hours to cure these barrels after they get wound. So we built a rotisserie inside the oven and we found that this actually made a huge difference with the consistency and the precision of our barrels because actually now if there is any resin that it'll equally distribute because it's rotating. So we actually had to build this entire thing and then we had to build a motor system. And what we found is the shaft that went through got hot and then made the motor hot. And so we got premature failures of the motor. So we actually put a heat sink on here and then a fan here that would then cool the heat sink just to keep the rotisserie motor going. You can see that these barrels are really fat and bulky. So there's a lot of extra carbon wound around the outside and this allows us to profile and get a clean blend between the steel at either end and the carbon in our post-processing. And we're gonna go over that tomorrow. So now we're gonna take it out and show you the finish grinding process. So let's take a look at them. So here's the barrel and now we're gonna Pull the tape off the ends here and we'll show you the finishing process in the lathe. So we already have a barrel set up here in the lathe. We just touched it off to set it in the right Z position. We're gonna use this grinding motor setup that we've built. It's got a specific diamond grinding wheel where we'll actually grind all the carbon and profile the steel so you get that really nice carbon fiber blended surface that we all like to see. Every part of this we've had to build, whether it be the riser plate, build the grinding motor system, program the whole machine to do this. We even had to get a custom built dust collector to be able to collect the carbon fiber dust that comes out of this. We don't want to get chopped in the knee, have our arms chopped off by the steering wheel, and watch out for the airbag, and keep your hands out of the gears. <laughs> yeah, we're right there. So this barrel is nearly done. Just a quick polish over the top, and this is going to turn into a 22 Creedmoor for one of our dealers, Stealth Vision. Here's the Altera carbon barrel that we just pulled out of the final grinding operation in the lathe there. You can see this is also an Altera barrel in a completed rifle, ready to go to the range. In a subsequent video, we're gonna show you how well these perform at the range and at distance. And we wanted to give a shout out to our customers. If it weren't for our customers, we wouldn't have the, the capability or the drive to continue to make amazing products, better products, continue to innovate. And it's truly our customer that allows R&D projects and allows this advancement in the industry where we can make awesome high performing products and continue to push the envelope. We appreciate you and uh, stay tuned for that next video where we take this rifle with a new Altera barrel out to the range.